Hey everyone, it's Colt. Today we're talking about creating cool animated gradient effects in CSS. So first of all, for some reason, my screen capture software absolutely hates gradients. It results in a ton of distortion and color banding. They look pretty bad in the video. But if you check out the links in the description, you'll actually see what they look like in person and they're smooth and nice looking. All right, so this video is not part of the Colts Code Camp course I've been putting out recently. This is just a standalone video on animated gradients, a kind of cool, fun topic. This video is brought to you by me, or more specifically, uh, the bootcamp that I just launched with Springboard. It's a software engineering bootcamp. It comes with a job guarantee. You get all your money back if you don't get a job. It's uh, self-paced online. You can work at nights or over the weekends or full time. Uh, you get a one-on-one -on -one mentor who's a professional developer at a big tech company who meets with you. You get code reviews, mock interviews, all this stuff. Uh, I did all the content. It's over a thousand new videos on topics like React and Redux and Node and Python. There's a link in the description if you're interested in learning more. And now the advertisement portion is over. Let's talk more about gradients. So we can do animated text like what you see here. And we could also do an animated background. Again, keep in mind that it looks horrible in this video, but it's actually very nice looking in person. So it's kind of a trendy, cool effect. And it's interesting because you can't actually animate a gradient. You can't transition a gradient like you could a background color. So instead, we have a bit of a workaround in order to animate gradients. So we're going to start by trying to recreate something like this. All right, so I've got a new code pen, nothing in here. I do have a font that I've imported just for the end, uh, but otherwise no HTML to look at, at least not right now. And I'm going to set a gradient on the background of the body. So I'm going to select the body and give it a background. You can do background image or just do the background shorthand. And then we have a couple options for gradients. Uh, this video is not really about the basics of gradients, but we have linear gradients, radial gradients, repeating linear gradients, repeating radial gradients, and conic gradients, although those aren't fully supported in, let's see, Firefox or IE. So we're just going to go with a linear gradient like this. Um, so the simplest syntax is linear gradient. And then we specify a, a direction. So you can do a degree measurement, like 45 degrees. And then let's just do red and purple. This is a pretty simple gradient. It's a 45 degree gradient from red to purple. I can add another color in there. I don't think this will look very nice, but red to cyan to purple. I can specify uh, a certain position or a size of each color chunk, like if I want more purple. There we go. So this is not really a video on the gradient uh, syntax itself, but there's a lot you can do with gradients. What I'm going to do is just copy one in that I spent a little bit of time uh, finding. Slightly mellower for background. There are websites like this website here, UI Gradients, that contains a bunch of pre-made gradients. And then you can get the CSS from here. Copy that, move that over, and use that as your background. So I've got the gradient as the background. Now the thing about gradients is that they are kind of just a fancy background image. I don't even know if they're fancy. They're just a background image uh, that you can't animate in a traditional sense. We can't transition uh, a background image to another background image. You could change the opacity or something of one element and have it fade into the next, but you can't actually animate the gradient itself, just like you can't animate an image or a background image at least. But what we can do is animate the size and the position of the background. So what we're going to do is take a gradient like this that has a bunch of colors. We're going to blow it up much larger, like four or five times larger. And then we're going to have that background position move. So that one background will stay exactly the same, but the small window that you're looking at or the small piece of that large gradient will move around, which will give you the appearance of an animated gradient. It is animated. It's just one massive gradient that is moving around slowly. So I'm going to take this gradient and set the background size to be way larger. Let's start with 400. So it's really, really large. You only see one small subset of that gradient at a time. And then what we'll do is animate it. And I'm not going to do the animation just yet, but using background position. So if I plug a number in here like 100%, 
we see a different portion of this massive gradient that we've made. If I plug in 200, different portion, 300, 400, we're just moving around and seeing a different part of that gradient. It might be easier to understand if, you know, if we had a background image. If you're not familiar with background position, play around with using a background image. Uh, but here's how background position works. We're just setting the initial position of our uh, background image. So there are keywords like top and left and center, but you also can use percentages. And that's what I'm using here. Those percentages will help me move around what part of the image we're actually seeing, what part of the linear gradient. So now I'm gonna set up a simple animation where I'm just gonna animate background position. So I'm gonna set up a keyframe here, key frames, and what should I call this? Animated gradient? Mm, I guess just gradient is fine. And then I'm gonna have a 0% in there and I'll set background position to be 0% and I'm gonna get rid of this here. We'll have it go from 0% and then at 50% of the way through this animation, we'll set it to be 100%, background position 100%, and then when we get to the end of this animation, we'll set it back to 0 again. And then we'll just have this repeat infinitely. So I'm going to add that on here, animation as a property. I want the gradient animation I just set up. Let's uh, start with a really fast one, like five seconds, so you can see how it works. Infinite. Okay, so that's kind of it for this basic example. I would slow this down personally, maybe 15 or 20 seconds. Let's see how that looks. And again, the screen capture software is totally screwing up the gradient. It looks horrible, but if you look at it in person, it does not look horrible. So then what I'm going to do is just quickly add in uh, some text in here. This is nothing fancy. I've got an H1, and then I'm going to set the height of the body so that this doesn't get all screwed up. I'm going to set the height of the body to be 100 VH. So height, 100 view height. And then I'm going to select that H1. I'm going to give it a color of white. I'm going to give it a font family of open sans sans uh, and then the backup will be a sans serif and then a font weight of 100 let me see do i have 100 or is it just 300 it's 300 all right well it doesn't matter it will look the same uh, and then i'm going to center this and make it larger so i'll do a larger font size maybe five rems and that might be a bit large. Four rems, we'll figure it out. Letter spacing is going to be two rems. We'll see how that looks. Get that trendy look going. And then uh, I guess I'll just make my body a flex box here. Display flex, justify content, center, and align items, center, to get that content centered. All right. So let me zoom out back to 100% and see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this basic example. Next up, we'll do something similar, but with text, where the text itself is the animated gradient, or it's filled with an animated gradient. So it's the same concept. We have a gradient that we blow up, make it too big, so you can't see the whole thing at once. And then we change its position so that you're seeing one portion of that gradient at a time. And we use a special property called background clip to make this work to clip the background to the text of our element. So here is my H1. It just says Colts Code Camp. It's the name of the uh, YouTube course that I've been putting out for the past couple weeks. Anyway, whatever the text is, I'm just going to select that H1 and give it a background of a gradient. Now I have a gradient already on my clipboard here. It is a radial gradient. Uh, let's see if I give this a much bigger height, you'll be able to see it, possibly. So it's a radial gradient, circle in the middle, radiating outwards. And I don't want to see that whole thing. What I want to do is clip it to this text. So first I'm going to make the font a bit bigger so I can see it. Uh, six rems maybe? Sure. And then to clip 
the background. What that really means is determining where the background of an element extends to. Okay, so just to demonstrate this, I'll put the border in here, or a border, and I'll put some padding in there too. How about just 20 pixels of padding? So the background extends around the content, which is right there, through the padding to the edge of the border. Now, if I instead set the background clip to be content box, you'll see the background only extends to the edge of the content. It does not cover the padding. We also have, uh, what is it, border box, which is the default, I believe. And there's one more missing, oh, padding box, which will stop at the beginning, the inner edge of the border. It's kind of hard to, to visualize, but if I did, you know, uh, how about a 20 pixel border that is a dashed line, dashed magenta. Here you can see that the background goes all the way to the outside edge of the border. And if I change this to padding box, now it's going to stop at the inner edge, basically the end of the padding. But we don't want any of those. What we want is text, which is still considered an experimental value. You can see the little flask there. And unfortunately in Chrome, it's not going to work unless I prefix background clip with the vendor prefix, which is WebKit. You can see on the support chart down here on MDN, Chrome is lagging behind. Partial support, you need to use the prefix version of the property, but it does work in Edge and Firefox. Safari, you've got to prefix it too. So to prefix it, it is WebKit dash background clip text. Now it doesn't look like anything happened, but that's because our text is black. We can't see the background because it's covering it. So then we'll set the color to be either transparent using a keyword, or you could do a RGBA color or something. All right, there is the background being clipped to our H1 text. I'm gonna get rid of the padding and the border. Okay, so now all we need to do is animate that background. So I'm gonna make it too large once again. Let's do background size. Uh, let's see what 200% looks like. Sure. And then I'm going to set up my same animation or a similar animation at keyframes gradient. And then at 0%, we'll have background position at uh, 0%. And then at 100%, we'll have background position at 100%. And then I'm going to set the animation here on all H1s, we just have one of them. And I'm going to set it to gradient, the name of our animation we just configured. Uh, let's go with something quick, like two seconds first, so we can view it. And then I'm gonna set it to be infinite. Actually, first I'm gonna set the easing. We'll do ease in. Should we just, nah, should we just do linear? I don't know, we'll play around with that. And then infinite alternate. So let's see what happens. I set it to be alternating so that you can see we end up with our, if you follow the pink little area, magenta, it's going left and then back to the right. If I did not have that alternate, or alternate, we would be going one direction and then reset left, reset over and over because of how I set up my animation this time. On the previous example, my animation went zero to 100 to zero. Just to show a different approach, I went from zero to 100 and then just alternate it. So we'll go zero to 100 and then work back the other way. Okay, so that should be it, except for I'm gonna change the font. Do that quickly. I've got uh, font family. I think I'm just going to do open sans sans again and set the default family. Do I have open? Yes. All right. And then font weight will be 300. And then I'll just center this the same way as I did last time. Do display flex on the box. And then uh, justify content. If any of you are not familiar with Flexbox, I'll have a video on that shortly, just to buy content and align items center. And I'll zoom out to a normal size, 100%, whoops. And I'll give this uh, a height, the body of 100 VH. So I'm gonna slow this down a bit, maybe closer to 10 seconds. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I think that's better. 
a little more relaxing to look at, not so intense. Okay, here's one more example. Uh, this is a code pen that I tweaked, so I didn't come up with this, at least this first bit in the nice little pop-up styles myself. It is originally by Katya Dewan. Um, anyway, it uses the exact same principle of having a gradient that is larger than needed or larger than can be seen at once, and then moving that gradient or moving the background position so that we get a little hover effect for a button. So you can get something like that, or I played around with a repeating linear gradient where I didn't have any blending between the colors. I wanted to see what it would look like. I'm not sure if it's very successful, but it's kind of fun just to show a different way of doing this. Same exact principle. It's just a gradient, and we're changing background position when you hover. So you can take a look at the code. It's pretty straightforward, changing background position, setting the background size to be oversized. Here's our background image and then small transition there, and then change the background position when we hover. All right, so three different examples of animated gradients, where we're taking uh, a gradient, we're blowing it up too large, and then moving it around using background position to animate it. So here's another example with our text, and then here is the buttons that may or may not be successful. It is important to note that animating the background position of something is not super performant. Uh, it's definitely not the worst thing that you could ever animate. But in general, if we're concerned with performance of our animations, we should stick to animating things like opacity and transform. I have a whole video on those two properties if you're curious and about why you should animate them and maybe not others. But honestly, it's not a big deal if you're doing like a header on your page or a landing page, you want some fancy effect. It's just important to note that you don't want to have, you know, hundreds of these on a page at once if you're concerned at all about performance. All right. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope everyone's doing well. Keep an eye out for some more content coming out pretty much every day these days. Uh, I've been putting out a ton of content on YouTube, a lot of it beginner oriented, but I'm also hard at work on some more advanced content. Uh, the next video you see from me will most likely be on React Hooks, so keep an eye out for that. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you later.